Alleluia, alleluia. I am the first and the last, says the Lord, and the living one. I was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to, to you, you, O Lord. Lord. Early, on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciple started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked in at the strips of linen lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter, who was behind him, arrived and went into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the burial cloth that had been around Jesus' head. The cloth was folded up by itself, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple who had reached the tomb first also went inside. He saw and believed. They still did not understand from scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to their homes. But Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white, seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realise that it was Jesus. Woman, he said, why are you crying? Who is it you are looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned towards him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabunai, which means teacher. Jesus said, Do not hold on to me, for I have not yet returned to the Father. Instead, go to my brothers and tell them, I am returning to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news, I have seen the Lord, and she told them that he had said these things to her. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. So may I speak in the name of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. This Easter celebration is unlike any in living memory, both here at New Southgate and throughout the world in churches. But the way that we're marking Easter today from the safety of our own homes is closer to that first Easter than we might at first realise. We have in our gospel a remarkable hinge in the passage. After the two disciples looked into the empty tomb, we are told, then the disciples returned to their homes. The disciples went back home. One, we're told, believed, but exactly in what isn't clear, because the text also tells us that they had not yet realised the truth that Jesus must rise from the dead. Instead, they went home, puzzled, confused, surprised. The resurrection of Jesus had not yet transformed them because they hadn't realised exactly what had happened, nor what it would mean for them. Recently, I've heard it said that COVID-19 has changed everything and things will never be the same again. Certainly, the virus has changed much. We have never been more grateful for our doctors and nurses 
and the teams of scientists doing research on vaccines. And certainly this virus is causing suffering on a massive scale for all of us the world over as we come to terms with the death of loved ones, with serious illness and the termination of jobs and livelihoods. But my brothers and sisters, the virus has not changed everything. Easter has changed everything. That day, recorded 2000 years ago and celebrated around the world today, that day changed everything. Because we knew that death stalks us. We knew that this world has threats to our health, causes of illness and suffering. We already knew there were things to fear, but the resurrection of Jesus Christ, that is something completely new. The two disciples didn't get it at first, they went home, but I think Mary understood. Mary is sometimes called the apostle to the apostles because the Greek word apostolos means the one who is sent. Mary was sent to the ones who were sent. She was sent to the disciples to declare to them, I have seen the Lord risen and alive. What earth shattering words those words must have been. Because the disciples had been crushed by the crucifixion as we all are when we're confronted with the death of one we loved. We are flattened and the wind is taken out of us. And so I'm not surprised that Mary didn't recognise Jesus initially. She wasn't expecting him to see him alive ever again because resurrection is completely new, completely new and changes everything. And excitingly, the good news is for us today. Because Jesus' resurrection and the promises that he makes to all people means that the resurrection can be a game changer for all of us today. One of my Christian heroes, a modern day saint, Shane Claiborne, wrote this a few years ago. All around you, people will be tiptoeing through life just to arrive at death safely. But dear children, do not tiptoe. Run, hop, skip or dance. Just don't tiptoe. The impact of death, which comes to us all, is changed in the light of the resurrection. Because we're told that death is not the end. We can share in Jesus' resurrection if we make our home with him. Writing to an early Christian community in that reading that Chris read for us earlier, St Paul helps us to articulate this. He writes, For you, Christians, have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, is revealed, then you also will be revealed with him in glory. Or put another way, Paul is saying, If you are rooted in Jesus Christ, baptised into Christ, then you have already died, dead to sin, dead to the world, dead to the old way. And instead you are alive, alive to eternal life with God. A life which starts now, at home, in self-isolation. A life which cannot be extinguished by death. Now they say that home is where the heart is, and that's true. God, in becoming human, on the cross, chose to make his home with humankind. He could have left us to it, to walk away and left us alone, but he didn't. Instead, he loved us to the end. God made his home with us. And in the resurrection, God puts out his hand and says, Make your home with me. And so this Easter, as we come to our Eucharist, the breaking of the bread, may you know God afresh. May you commit yourself afresh into his open arms. Amen.